In lab 9, we first have our introduction. This is the archiving and compression lab. And by performing this, we will be able to create archive files using tar with and without compression. Also compress and uncompress files with a gzip archive file, as well as compress and uncompress files into a bzip2 archive file, and compress uncompressed files into an xz archive file. So these are just the same thing but using different kinds of methods. And then we also have the zip and unzip to compress and uncompress archive files. In 9.2 archiving commands, we are using gzip, bzip2, tar, zip, unzip, and xz, unxz. These two can be used interchangeably to archive and restore files. These commands are designed to either merge, multiply into a single file, or compress larger files into a smaller one. In some cases, the command that we're going to be using will perform both functions. And then this tells us why this can be useful, about how large files can be difficult to transfer, and the benefits of compressing files. Now we're going to work inside of our command shell. We'll clear this to get rid of this, and we'll start by using the tar command. First, our current directory we have to note that we're in home system admin. We know that in this shell that we have a slash etc slash udev directory and we can check this by going into the C etc directory by doing cd slash etc. We're now in the etc directory. If we do ls, which will list all of our files, we can see that we have a udev directory right here. I'm going to go back to our home directory and what we want to do here is create an archive of this directory and save the backups to a new directory in our home called my backups directory. Currently, if we do ls, we are in our home directory, we see that we don't have a my backups directory. So we are going to have to make that. To make a directory, we remember from previous lab, we would use mkdir my backups. And this creates a new directory. If we do ls, we can see that we now have the directory my backups in here. If we want to create an archive of this slash etc slash udev directory, what we need to start out with is tar. This stands for tape archive. Then we need to use a slash c. What this stands for is creating. So this will create a new archive. We can add a v, which stands for vobos, as we learned in the last lab, and it will output, it will notify us if we are doing our code successfully. Then we have an F and what this F means is that after we have these options the F is basically telling our command line to read the file after this. So whatever is after this F has to be the file name. So in all of our options the F has to be the very last thing. We want our backup directory and that is my backups that we have right here. We are going to do a slash and then udev.tar. The reason we have udev is because this is what we're copying from our previous slash etc directory. And then we're gonna have a space and do slash etc slash udev. And this is exactly where we are copying it from. If we press enter, we can see that it executed successfully. Now, if I wanted to check this, I could just do ls my backups, and this will list what is inside of my backups and it is currently udev.tar. We're given more information below right here, telling us the tar command is used to merge multiple files into a single file, and by default, it does not compress data. In 9.2.2, we are told that we can display the contents of a tar file by using the available options. This is T, V, and F. So the first thing that we're gonna write out is tar. Always have to write out tar when we are archiving. So we'll have our tar, and then we have a dash T, which stands for list contents. We have V to make sure this works correctly. And then F, we need F because everything after this is going to be the file name. And then we'll have our directory, which is my backups, which we just created. And then the actual file itself, which is udev.tar. And this is going to, actually udev is not a file, it is a directory. And these are all of the files inside of it and the information about it. In 9.2.3, we are introduced to creating a tar using the dash z option, which compresses it. The dash z option makes use of the gzip utility to perform compression. So 
When we do this, we are going to have our tar, as always. We need our dash Z, which will be the compression for it. We have to have our C because we want to create our tar. We have a V to make sure it outputs successfully, and then F to make sure everything after this is read as a file. We want to have our my backups. We're gonna have my backups dot udev dot tar dot gz, and then we where we are copying it from its original location, which is slash etc slash udev. And what this is doing is we are creating our tar file and moving everything from the etc udev directory into it. If we want to see our compression though, because there is a difference between what we did last time and this time. What we did this time is compressing it. The other one was just creating the tar file and relocating it or copying it. And this is compressing it. So archiving and now we are compressing, which is part of archiving. So if we want to see what we did, we can do ls-lh and then our directory, which is my backups do a slash, press enter, we can see the difference. So we compressed from 10K or 10 kilobytes down to 1.2K with a total of 16K. If we want to extract the contents of an archive, we can use this example to demonstrate it. So we do CD my backups. What this does is it'll take us into the my backups directory if I spell it correctly. Now we are in the my backups directory. We want to list what we have in here. So we have our udev tar and our udev tar.gz. This .gz is our compressed version of our udev.tar. And we can see this here. We compressed it in the last example, and now we have two different files. To extract this, instead of using a dash C, which creates this, we're going to use a dash X for extracting. So we are going to have our tar as always. We also are going to put in our new dash X, a V to make sure it runs correctly, and then F to indicate that everything afterwards is a file. We're going to have udev.tar.gz, and this is the file that we are extracting, we're explicitly stating it, and if we press enter, we can see that we have done this correctly, as our output is the same as the example, or very similar. Next, we're just going to look back into the my backups because we extracted this using this command here. So we can list this by doing ls. We can see that now we have etc in here. So if we do ls etc, we can see that we have inside of our etc udev. If we go inside of our udev by doing ls etc slash udev, we can see that we have these directories and files in here. And then if we do that again, but for rules.d in our directory, we are just going to get these files here. And then we have more information about if we want to if we want to move files back to the original location in the CD directory, also using tar command. In 9.2.5, we are told to add a file to an existing archive. We use the dash r option to the tar command. So we're still in the my backups directory. We are going to have our tar as always dash r because we want to add a file to the existing archive, v to make sure it prints out correctly, and then f to indicate that everything after this is a file. So first we want to be in the directory that we want to edit or that we want to add to. So we are going to do udev.tar because this is where we want to be. We want to be right here for this example because we want to add something in here. So we're doing tar dash r v f u d ev dot tar. I should have a slash etc slash hosts because the difference between this and this is that this first one that I wrote out and I made a mistake on, it doesn't say what I want to add in. There's no, there's nothing to add. It just, it just tells us the tar, the options, and then where we are adding in, but it doesn't tell us what we're adding in. In this one, we have this part right here, this slash etc slash hosts, which is what we are adding in. If we press enter, we can see that we have removing leading dash from member names, getting rid of that. And if we do, if we want to check this, we would do a tar. And with tars, we would do a dash t to check, a v just to make sure our code runs correctly, an f to make sure that everything after this is our file name and what we're checking, which is udev.tar. And now we're in udev.tar. We can see that we have a new directory called etc slash hosts. 
in 9.2.6. In the following examples, we will use gzip and gunzip to compress and then uncompress, respectively, a file. We are given the following commands here and a output that we should get. So first, I'm going to clear the current console. We're still in the my backups directory, and we want to copy cp. This is from the last lab user slash share slash dict slash words. So inner slash user directory will have a slash share directory, which will go to a slash dict directory, and we will get words from here. Then we have a space and period. Once we have all of this in our command line, we can press enter, and we can see nothing, no errors have happened, so this should be good. If we do ls dash l words, we can see what this is and where it's located. It's going to be sysadmin, sysadmin has permissions, and the total file size. So our current total file size is 971,578. If we want to compress this, we will use the gzip. So we will have gzip and then the file name, which is words. Pressing enter, it's going to take a moment, as we saw, but it worked properly. To check if this works, we, we compressed it, so we need to see if our size is smaller. So we'll do ls-l words dot gz. This gz is standard. This dot gz, I mean, is standard, and it follows whatever our file name is. If we press enter here, we are going to see that it is a lot smaller than what it was before we compressed it. In 9.2.7, we can see how we are going to uncompress using the gun zip. So we want to see what our current words.gz is. It's what they're having us do right here. But we can just look back at our previous code and have this right here. It is currently the size 259,983. So we want to uncompress this. We will use the gun zip and then words.gz. Pressing enter, got no errors, so we should be good. But we'll check it by doing ls-l words. And now we can see that we have the previous file size, which was 97, 971,578. And our file is no longer compressed. An alternate way to compress and uncompress a file is using the bzip2 and bunzip2. This is very similar to gzip and gunzip. The compressed file is created with a .bz2 extension. The extension is then removed when it's uncompressed. And we have the following example to test this. So we're going to clear our current console. First, we want to see our word size. So we'll do ls-l words and the ls-l and then a specific file name just displays the specific information on it. So after we have this, we want to compress our file. For this example, we're going to use bzip2. So we will just have bzip2 and then our file name, which is words. It's going to take a minute again because it has to compress this. Once it works, we have no errors, and we can list this out again. We will do ls-l words.bz2. In doing this, we can see that our size is a whole lot smaller. It's about a third smaller, being only 345,560. If we recall the previous results with gzip, the gzip file was actually a lot smaller. To uncompress this file, we're just going to use the bunzip2. So we will write out bunzip2, and then our file name, which is currently words.bz2. If we press enter, it takes a second, but then it comes up with no errors. And then we can just see if we do ls-l words that we have the previous original size. Another option we have is the xz and unxz to compress and uncompress a file. This, again, is similar to the gzip and gunzip for compressing and uncompressing. A compressed file uses the .xz extension, and the extension is removed when it's uncompressed. We are given an example that will compress a copy of the words file. So we have our ls-l words, we see the current file size, which is almost 1 million, and we can start compressing this. So we will do xz, and then our file name, which is words. Press enter, this will take a second, but once it writes it out, or once it compresses it, we will be able to write in here again. As shown down here, the .xz actually compresses it more than .gz. 
So this is this seems to be the best compression. This will yield the best results if you're trying to get a smaller file. But if we do ls-l and then words.xz to see our current size, we see that this is a whole lot smaller than what we had. In 9.2.11, we're just going to be uncompressing this file. So we have our current size when it's compressed, which is almost 200,000. To uncompress this, we're just going to use unxz or unxz and then our file name, which is words.xz. Pressing enter, this happens almost immediately and we can do ls-l words and it will print out the original file size. And this gives just more context about the whole zip, gzip, and xz. Then we are told about the benefits of actually making a zip file and not a gzip file, a bzip file, or xz. And the benefit of just having a zip archive type is that it will copy the original file and compress it while also leaving the original contents uncompressed. So you'll have two copies, one compressed and one uncompressed. In 9.2.12 we have the zip command that compresses our words file. So we're going to use this which will give us this output. So first we are going to start this with zip, stating it's a zip command, and then we have the file that we want to create a zip file for. This is just the file name and we want words. Then we need a dot zip here and then our words again. So zip file name dot zip and the file name again. If we press enter, it says adding words, deflated 73%. That took a second, but now we can type in our command line again. So we want to check our zip again. We will do ls-l words.zip. So this is looking and relaying information about our words.zip file. If we press enter here, we can see that it is smaller than our previous words file. The second dot zip that we have right here is not required. It is just for good practice and style when giving it to or sending it to other people. That way they know it's a zip file. In 9.2.13, we are given another example to compress the slash etc slash udiv directory and its contents with the zip compression. So I'm going to clear my console and then I will do zip dash r and dash r indicates that recursion is needed because zip files will not automatically recurse into subdirectories by default like tar does. So we need to use this dash r to get all of the subdirectories with it. We will have our file name, which is udev. We have dot zip and then where we are pulling it from, which is slash etc slash udev. We press enter and we get all of these. So it adds this adding part is it adding it into the zip file. So all of these we were correctly added into the zip file. And if we do ls-l udev.zip, we can check on our udev.zip file and we can see that it is slightly bigger than this, but that's probably because it was updated, but it is still probably relatively smaller than the slash udev directory. We can actually check this by doing change directory. So now we're back in our home directory. We'll do cd slash etc slash udev going into our udev directory we should actually just be in our slash etc directory this should be fine so we'll do cd dot dot to go back to one directory cd dot dot pulls us back a previous directory or it moves us up one level so now that we're back here we can do ls dash l and then udev doing this we can see that the total file sizes inside of here well we have two directories and then a file and these two directories and this file added together are a lot bigger than this size. To view the contents of a zip archive, we need to use the dash L option with the unzip command so we can unzip this. I'm going to go back into the my backups directory. Now we're back in my backups by doing CD change directory out of our ETC back to our home and then CD back to my backups. Now that we're in my backups, which is where we made the zip file, we can unzip it. So we will do unzip dash l undev or udev dot zip. So we are unzipping it dash l to look at it and then the udev dot zip is just the file name. Pressing enter we can see the length, time, date, and name and we have all this information given to us right here. 
and 9.2.15 to extract the zip archive, we need to use the unzip command without any options. In this example, we first need to delete the files that we created in the earlier tar example. Basically, in my backups, when we first did ls, we have all of these directories and files, zip files, all of this stuff. When we remove by doing rm-retc, we are just removing this directory, this etc directory. If we list this again, we can see that the etc directory is no longer in here. And then when we unzip this file, udev.zip, well, we're putting all of these things in here, which is the etc directory and all of these subdirectories, folders, files, all that information. And if we list it again, we can see that etc is back inside of here. This is the end of our chapter nine lab, which is archiving and compression.